Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about and actually showing you how a scriptable objects work in Unity. And the reason why I want to do this is because I actually want to store player information in these data containers that now Unity has. So I'm actually going to start coding and I want you to follow me through what I'm going to be doing to store player information. So this is basically the structure of my, of my game. I have all my managers, so I'm going to create a new manager and I'm going to call it the player player statistics stats manager. We can we can do that for now and I'm actually going to create a mono behavior behavior singleton just a class that I already have in there to store to create a singleton. And I'm actually gonna get, gonna be bringing it in. So let's actually go into this other class. And I think I might have spelled it. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. And then select it, and then just bring it in. So I'll bring in the using statement. So that's fine if it's error right now. It just hasn't loaded. So the other thing that I want to do. So I have the manager that it's gonna manage the class that I'm about to create. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new entity. So this new entity is going to be the player information. So we just we can just call it player info entity. And the way that the scriptable objects work is that you have to inherit from a scriptable object. Scri scriptable object. It's very late at night here, so if you are suffering by seeing me type, that's completely fine. I swear this is going to be really helpful. So, okay, perfect. And let's go into, so we're going to actually add a menu option to allow us to create these player info object. So we're just going to call it, actually let's just call it player data and the menu name it's going to be under, we can just call it, let's see, configuration. And we can just say player, create player data. And I think that's that's perfect. Actually, let's just put this under game. So we, data, so game data and create player data. Okay, excellent. So there's some information that I want to that I want to include in this data container. So the first one that I want to know is I want to know their login. So if they're logging whatever platform that they're using, I want to know that information. So I want to basically create a new public field and this is gonna be called just login. Login name. Okay. Then the other thing that I want to know, I want to know the last level that they basically got to. So I'm just going to do an int for last level play. And we can just basically set it to zero. The, the other one that I want to do is I want to track their score. So I, I'm going to create another public integer. And this is going to be, we can just say score. So we have login, last level play, and then score. And I think that's pretty much all I want to track for now. And yeah, that's fine. That's everything we want to track for now. Then the other thing that I want to do is I want to go back to the player stats manager. And I'm going to create a new property of that type. So I'm going to say public player info entity. And then we're just going to say player Actually, this is lowercase l, player, info entity. And I believe that's everything that we need for now. So let's go back into Unity. And if the code works, so it looks like we have, a, we have an error. Let's go back into it and see what our error is. And we have to, oh, I see the namespace. I'm actually using a different namespace. I have to fix that. 
So actually, all of these ones don't have a namespace. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the namespace. And I do recommend that you use namespaces. But for this demo, I don't think we need that. And let's see. That's perfect. OK, let's go back into Unity. And let's, let, let's give it a second until it compiles. OK, so we have a clean build. All right, so what I want to do is I want to create a new. So if you remember, I had an option that we that we added. And it was under, so if we right click, actually, if we go into here, into Assets, let's create a new folder and call it Data. And instead of the Data folder, I'm going to right click on it. And you can see that I now have a game option, Data, Create Player Data. And this is going to create what is called a, script, a scriptable object data container. And we can just leave that by default. And for now, we can just say, OK, this is me. And the last level that I played was level 10. And I had about 250 in my score. So now what's going to happen is if I go back to my level container, let's see, play, play, player stats manager, if I go into, let's actually do this. Let's do at the awake method. And in here, what I'm going to do is actually let's go back into Unity. And we haven't really linked anything just yet because the way that I have some of these singletons is that they get created automatically. So what I'm going to do for this one, just for the demonstration, is I'm going to create a player stats manager right on the hierarchy. And we're going to associate it with our, with our singleton. And you can see that it basically is asking us for the player info entity and the player info entity is, is going to be our player data. So now if we go back into our game, into our code, I can actually say, let's say that I want to know, for instance, I want to know the name of the person that is logged in. So it's actually a login name. Let's say that I also want to know, you know, their score and I want to know the last level that they play. Let's actually close out of close out of the code and then hit play and we have, we got an error. And why do we have an error? Let's see. We have the debug that's not oh the name debug. Okay. Yeah, that's because I haven't actually added Unity into my using so I'm just gonna do unity engine and we can also do unity editor and it looks like that's it's actually part of the unity engine so we don't need the editor perfect I actually close the code it's clear make sure that everything is clean okay perfect and we can kind of see the so let's go into data okay so perfect so if i hit play i should expect to see those values in the console and i'm getting those values in the console so the other thing that is cool is if i were let's say that i that i change this value to let's say to 500 and i go into the into the source code to do that so let me actually go into my my managers and i'm going to go into let's actually open any of them and then we'll find the other one which happened to be right above it. So if I go in and change the score, let's say that the, for whatever reason I got to, let's say that I got, let's actually add 100 to the score. And let's go hit play. So you're gonna see that it actually gets updated. And it doesn't only get updated in runtime, but it actually gets updated in this file. So if I hit play, so I added 100, so we, I expect to see an increment. So if you see 250, and we now see 350. The reason why it doesn't display the, the new amount is because we printed it before we added it. So if I were to basically unpass the, unplay the game, and then play it one more time, you're gonna see that the amount now goes to 350, and we incremented it to 450. So 
that's why I use scriptable objects for, and that's what I'm going to be using them in my game to actually store some of the player information. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, let me know through the comments, and don't forget to share and subscribe this video. Thank you, guys.